Eric Young and Matt Hall of K-State Online from inside of Boone Pickens Stadium here in Stillwater for the KSO Sunday Show, which is brought to you by People's State Bank and Legacy Insurance. Derek, K-State takes his first loss of the Chris Kleiman era, 26-13 to Oklahoma State tonight. Chuba Hubbard goes for nearly 300 yards. The Wildcat defense plays pretty well for the most part, but offense can't do enough to really stay in this game. Yeah, it's a really uneven performance. Uh, not that there's a, such a thing as a moral loss, and I'm not saying this is one, but it almost seemed like they escaped by only losing 26-13. Right. to 13. right, exactly. Kind of the opposite of a moral loss. It almost felt worse than it was. But still, 26-13 game, as we always do here in segment one of the Sunday show. I'm now going to walk you through every scoring drive as Grant Flanders shows you the highlights we do have from this game. Oklahoma State gets on the board first, Eric, with a three point lead on a 25 yard Matt Amendola field goal. Kind of a theme throughout the night. K-State Stevens gave us some yards here, seven plays, 51 yards, but they keep Oklahoma State out of the red, excuse me, out of the end zone in the red zone and only trail three nothing after the first Oklahoma State scoring drive. Yeah, the red zone defense was the story of the night for the defense. That's why they can kind of escape with a decent performance despite allowing over 100 yards receiving to Tyler Wallace and almost 300 yards to rushing to Chuba Hubbard because they were so effective in the red zone. Six scoring drives tonight for Oklahoma State, but only two reached the end zone. Not just a good thing for Kansas State, kind of a troublesome trend for Oklahoma State, which they struggled with last week against Texas as well. No doubt about that. Oklahoma State does get in the end zone later in the first quarter with 3.57 left. Logan Carter catches a three-yard touchdown from Spencer Sanders. Another Matt Amendola extra point. His first actually makes it 10-0. So K-State does get down two scores for the first time this year in the first quarter. They don't necessarily panic at that point at all, but they can't really get back in it after that point either, Derek. Yeah, that was the only touchdown, I believe, of the first half, and it came nope. on a short field. It was at the 26-yard line, Correct. only a 26-yard drive. James Gilbert fumble really set up the Cowboys. So they're only touchdown of the half of the first half became because they didn't even have to go 30 yards. Yep. So at halftime, K-State has only given up third, well, 16 points at that point, but the only touchdown, like you said, came off a 26-yard drive. Oklahoma State does score again next to go up 13-0 on another short field goal from Matt Amendola as K-State's red, no, red zone defense stiffens up again. The Wildcats finally answer for the first time after an hour and 12-minute lightning delay here in Stillwater. Blake Lynch knocks in a 46-yard field goal to cap off a six-play 47-yard drive, Derek, and K-State's on the board trailing 13-3 with 535 left in the first half. Yeah, and it's one of those things where – Obviously, Kansas State, they're in the red zone themselves or maybe just outside. Uh, forget the distance on that, but they needed to get six, only got three. And you were hoping, you know, keep that a 13-3 ball game heading into halftime because you're going to get the ball first in the second half. Exactly right. They can't quite do that, of course, as Oklahoma State gets another short field goal from Amendola, makes it 16-3 with 2.06 left in the first half. K-State still has a shot, Derek, kind of like you talked about, to go back and score, perhaps be within a touchdown in the second when the second half starts and they get the ball. They're not able to do that, unfortunately, and it doesn't take Oklahoma State long in the second half to really, I don't know if they put this one away, but they make it really difficult for K-State as Chuba Hubbard goes 84 yards on the first play of their possession in the second half to make it 23-3 in favor of the Cowboys with still 13 minutes left in that third quarter. Yeah, end of the first half is what you started with there, and it's kind of starting to become a trend where they struggle at the end of the first half. They did the same thing against Mississippi State, allowing the long touchdown right before halftime. And then again, against Oklahoma State this week, giving up the field goal. And then coming out of the half, giving up the long touchdown to Chuba Hubbard. Uh, it's easy to get 296 yards when one of them goes for over 80. No doubt about it. He was fantastic today, but it was the big plays, like you just said, that really made the difference. K-State does score the next 10 here, Derek. They get back-to-back -back turnovers, the first from Elijah Sullivan, the second from Daryl Patterson on a possession where K-State had about eight backups on the field on defense at that point. So those two scores, a 37-yard field goal from Blake Lynch that made it 23-6, and then a five-yard touchdown from James Gilbert, K-State's only touchdown of the night that makes it 23-13. So you're within 10 at that point. But, Derek, i got to ask, they have a sequence there where they do not go for it on fourth and relatively short at midfield. They also take a field goal that leaves them down three scores even after making it late there on that Blake Lynch field goal. Did you feel K-State was too conservative there, or were they doing the right things maybe hang around and stay in this game? Uh, that allowed them to stay in the game. My call would have been a, to be a little bit more aggressive, to give ourselves more of an opportunity. I don't. I, didn't, I wasn't certain how many scoring opportunities they had remaining in the game just because of how much they were struggling to move the ball. So once they finally got an Oklahoma State side of the field, only a fourth and two. And granted, they've been struggling on third and shorts, fourth and short all night. So I understand maybe not having confidence to uh, convert on those. But if you can't convert on those, at some point you're going to – I mean, you're going to have to do it. You're not going to win the game without converting on those. So you have to try at some point. That's where I kind of wanted to, to see them work uh, and, and do that. 
Sorry, Derek. I was just I was distracted him there while I was moving around as you couldn't see him. Oklahoma State's last points coming another short Amendola field goal. They get all the way to the one with over a minute, just over a minute left in this game. They knock it in to make it 26-13. That's the final score here today as K-State falls to Oklahoma State to fall to three and one of the year and 0-1 in Big 12 play. We'll come back in segment two. And Derek will let you hear from K-State coach Chris Kleiman in post game from Stillwater. I, I really had a lot of confidence. We've got some momentum going our way. We're moving the ball, um, got an end zone finally. And I was like, man, we get a stop here. We can we can make this a game. Mm -hmm. um, felt like we had a lot of momentum going on offense. I was, I was uh, feeling good. Just wanted the ball in my hands. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, you know, it's just unfortunate that we couldn't get us, you know, get a stop. But you know, we can't put our defense in that situation. Uh, we didn't help them at all uh, tonight. So we can't put nothing on anybody. You know, this is team team effort, and we just uh, man, we left some stuff out there, and yeah. could have been better on offense for sure. But you know, I think our defense played great. Special teams played great. Uh, we just got to be better on offense ultimately. Kyle, he's, he's a tough guy, man. He's yeah. going to go back in there and look at everything, get the offense back, get, you know what I'm saying, offense back together, corral everybody back together. But he's a great leader, man. Yeah. Just, um, he even talked to us in our uh, locker room after. Just, just knowing that we got to keep our heads up and stay positive for the next week as well, too. Pass off this college. Right. Pass off. Welcome back to the KSO Sunday Show presented by Legacy Insurance and People's State Bank. I'm Derek Young of K-State Online. For segment two, a little bit different this week. Uh, I think for the Mississippi State game, we had Skylar Thompson kind of start the show and, and, and or start the segment and end segment two. And this week, after falling to Oklahoma State and Chris Kleiman's first loss since being at Kansas State, we're going to show you 10 minutes of his press conference in Stillwater following the game. All right, folks. Um... Congratulate uh, Coach Gundy and Oklahoma State. They, they played a, a really good football game. Um, we knew it was going to be a challenge coming in here and trying to, to slow down um, something, whether it was a run game, whether it was a throwing game, the quarterback. Um, you know, our, our goal was to uh, handle the tempo, uh, not get frustrated if, if they make a play, um, and uh, forget about the previous play and go to the next play and, and hold them to field goals. We thought if we could win in the red zone, we'd have an opportunity. So I was pleased with that. You can forget about yards. I don't care about that. We held them to you know, 26 points, which is uh, uh, a, a pr pretty good effort by our defense. Um, created a few turnovers offensively. We just couldn't, couldn't get enough going, especially on first and 10. That was where we struggled. We just didn't uh, get into a great rhythm on offense and first and 10, and that's a, a credit to – uh, to their defense. And so um, we've got to go back to work on Monday. Like I told the guys, we've got a good football team. We've got a guys with great resolve. We've got a bunch of great leaders in there um, that uh, nothing's going to change from us as a coaching staff. We still believe in you. We still um, trust that we're going to continue to move forward and get better. And, and they've got to do the same thing and, and flush this and get ready to go on Monday. You, you would praise their corners a lot this week. How difficult was it to get separation against those guys in the passing? It, it was. Uh, you know, there just seemed like we had some time early on, but nobody was getting open. And, uh, and then they closed on the ball exceptionally well. And, and uh, you know, they were, they were going to sit and play a lot of man coverage. And um, especially, it didn't matter if it was spread out formations or condensed formations, they were going to say, hey, we're going to try to play man coverage and beat you. You had halftime and came out of there. It was kind of an opportunity to hit reset after the, uh, the delay, um, go three and out. Yeah, a little bit. You know, we had the first break, and we come back and make a big-time play. You know, Sammy Wheeler makes a great play, which uh, which we need Sammy to make a big-time play, and, and that was a good confidence builder for him. So we were able to get three points there, and uh, I don't think the delay or anything was any factor. It really wasn't. It probably, if anything else, gave us a chance to reset and do some things on defense a little bit to try to help slow them down. And then uh, we just missed a fit. Um, and. You know, give those guys credit. Uh, I know Coach Hayes was frustrated. We missed a, a fit that uh, we typically would, would hit, um, and we didn't. And, and the kid's a great player. And he, if you miss something against that guy, he's going to take it to the distance. Do you think of the way, the way Skyler played today? You know, uh, he was under duress. So let's, let's you know, look at the film and stuff. And, and he got hit quite a bit. But, uh, um, you know, he's going to learn and, and get better. And, and uh, I'm, I know one thing. The kid friggin' battled, and he battled, and he battled, and he always thought he we were going to win, and that's what I love about Skyler is he's such a competitor, and uh, we're going to all learn from it. Talk about the defensive uh, adjustments in the second half that you really shut it down. Well, we played a lot of single high man coverage, and 
Uh, obviously, the, the receiver made some made some pretty good catches, made some good plays, and some uh, you know tough tough balls, and he made some plays. And so then we we started playing a little bit uh, of too high, and then we started pressuring them more. The one thing we didn't think is uh, that people had pressured these guys enough, and to try to get some hits on on the quarterback. And so um, we were able to do that. You know, we were able to cause some problems. We were able to force a couple of picks. We were able to force a uh, a fumble, even though it was a fourth down play. It was a great play by Wyatt. So um, you know, I, I thought our defense did a nice job. You know, it, I, it didn't listening on the headset. You now we'll go back and talk about it as a staff to see um, you know, how much that did a, a affect us. But it really shouldn't when we were within two scores, uh, especially early on. Uh, it, it shouldn't affect us. And we were down, you know, against uh, Mississippi State. I know we had the kick return to get it back, but we weren't going to change our mentality there. Obviously, we're not a team that wants to get down by two scores because of, of the style of offense we play. We'd rather be uh, in a one-score game or, a, or ahead so that we can run the football. You, you always say uh, every game is different. Every game yeah. is its own game. This is one game. This is one loss in the locker room just now. What, what, what do you see over the career? Uh, the kids care. And the kids want to be great. And I've said from day one, whatever you did last Saturday has no bearing on the next Saturday. And I'm a firm believer in that. What we did against Nichols had no bearing on Bowling Green and so on and so forth. And and we've just got to learn from our mistakes. We've got to uh, clean up some things uh, in all phases of the game. Um, it, it's still it's, it's a marathon, not a sprint. And we've played four games and um, have had back-to-back -back road games and we're excited to get back home. And, and uh, I, I know one thing, th those guys in the locker Room. They've got a. They've. We've got great leadership. We've got great resolve. You know, I, I love those kids because of their competitiveness, uh, and we'll be back ready to play. It's just one snap, but on the first off of the play, is the wheel route to Gilbert like in that progression, or is that not a, a gross Kyler looking at? In the first play of the game, yeah. it definitely is, and I didn't see the play, so I, I don't have an answer of what he was looking at. I. I but absolutely, it is. Yeah. How much was it playing without Malik today? And well, I, I don't know uh, how long he'll be out. It's a lower body body injury. Uh, we learned about it. You know, he's he probably got it in Mississippi State. Tried to fight through it. And we learned on Wednesday. But you know, uh, shoot, we didn't play without Wyatt Hubert and Walt Neal, and we found a way to uh, to persevere at Mississippi State. It's the next man up. I think you, you know we missed Wyatt Hubert and, and Walt Neal before, but we were able to overcome it. You, you, absolutely, you, you miss a guy, but it gives somebody else an opportunity to step up, and, and uh, um, hopefully we'll get him back soon. How shocked were you in the struggles with the running game, or would you would you say maybe the offensive line wasn't getting enough push there? Or what, what was the issue? I, I got to look at it, but I, I really believe that uh, they did some really nice things up front, um, and. Uh, it, you know, we for whatever reason couldn't get things going, and we'll we'll look at it as we look at the tape. But I, I right now, I'm not quite sure. Other than we just got to be better. You had a drive in the second half where they get eight backups on the field and you get an interception and a big play from them uh, with Daryl Patterson. I guess here's my back to play on that drive. Well, we were going to play a lot of bodies, and if you notice, every time there was a substitution for us, it was a hockey line change. I mean, we were getting as many guys in there as we could to try to to try to limit some of the. Uh, some of the plays they had. And I look at there, they had 69 offensive plays. I know they had a bunch of yards. Once again, I'm, I'm more of a, a points guy, but you know, 69 snaps is, is not a lot of snaps for those guys. And so um, I, I was pleased. You know, DP made a play. We played, oh boy, a bunch of D linemen. We played a bunch of guys in the secondary. <clears throat> we played three linebackers. Something that we're going to have to lean on as we continue on conference play. Well, I, I wanted to get the points there simply because I thought Skyler was gassed, you know, and I thought, okay, let's let's get them settled down. And I also knew there was going to be more possessions, or I'd hope there'd be more possessions because they were going fast. And we ended up getting the ball back pretty quickly. I don't know if that was after the interception or not, but they didn't slow their tempo down. So um, I, I thought we could probably get the ball back. He's just – he's a great football player. He, he can – he can run through arm tackles. He gets his shoulder square and, and can outrun you. Um, you know, he's he's a dynamite player. And, and uh, uh, moving forward, people, this, this is a tough offense to defend because you, you have to pick your poison a little bit of what you want to do uh, in defending a, a terrific wide receiver, a terrific quarterback, and a terrific running back. How much with the rush defense is 
is it a product of Chuba just being so good, and how much of it is maybe a concern? Well, we got to clean up uh, when they were in their, their three-back set, and I know there weren't backs in there, there were tight ends, but we've got to clean that up. That's We, we lost two big plays on that, um, and, uh, you know, once again, seeing it from the field, we're, we, we think we're talking it through, uh, but uh, we've, we've got to clean that up. But let's give him credit, too. He, he ran through a couple arm tackles. Well, Hubert at one point was just unblockable on the right side for their right side. So yeah. Yeah, I thought he played exceptionally hard. I thought I thought all our guys, you know, they, they battled, and, and that's the one thing is uh, there's not any quit in that locker room, and those, those guys are they're hurting right now. Um, obviously, nobody wants to lose, uh, nobody wants to to not play their best, but uh, sometimes you got to tip your cap to the to the opponent. They they did a nice job, and they were a better team today. No, you can't. You know, it's once again, it's I, I, like I told the guys, I'm not going to change. Uh, they don't know that yet because we haven't had a loss. And I and I promise those guys, I'm not going to change. I'm, I'm still going to challenge them. I'm still going to love them. I'm going to still uh, be the same guy. And then the challenge to them is, don't you guys change? You guys are preparing your tails off. We didn't execute exceptionally well tonight, but our preparation, uh, I thought the last two weeks was dynamite. And if we keep believing and buying in and stacking those days of, of having great preparation, it'll pay off. Anything else? All right. Appreciate all right. It. Thanks, guys. I mean, I think players and coaches across the board are all there for each other, picking each other up, telling each other. I mean, Coach Kleiman's big message is like, you know, we're, we're still a good football team. You know, we didn't play the best game tonight. We weren't the best team on the field tonight. Uh, we didn't execute like we needed to. Didn't play a consistent game. But that doesn't mean we're not a good team. That doesn't mean we didn't do things to get to this point. Um, that we can do again to be a good football team. You know, I think this was a good game for us, a good learning experience, you know, just, you know, adapting back to Big 12 football, uh, you know, with all the big, you know, with all the playmakers and, uh, you know, the big plays that, you know, uh, happens in the Big 12 conference. And, uh, you know, it's just a learning experience for us. You know, it's just uh, us, I say, you know, adapting back to the Big 12. You're listening to the KSO Sunday Show. Matt Hall and I will be back for segment three where we talk a little bit big picture about the Wildcats following their first loss of the 2019 regular season. Is this a situation where if they're losing a game, you wish you go play again tomorrow and get this back, or is it okay uh, yeah, to get? I'm not yeah, I'm going to lie, yeah, but I mean, we just got a week to prepare, though. So, I mean, we just take this loss and just <laughs> keep it all in until we play next time. So, that's how I feel. Derek and I are back for the third and final segment of this week's KSO Sunday Show, which, as always, is brought to you by People State Bank and Legacy Insurance. Derek, let's go position by position, really side of the ball by side of the ball, if I'm being honest, and look at K-State today before we look forward. Let's start defense. A lot of yards given up, but Chris Kleiman said, and I agree with him a number of times in the post game. he's not about yards, he's about points. K-State does hold Oklahoma State to 26. They do force two turnovers. They didn't win the game, of course, but they probably did enough to keep K-State in this game and have a chance to win just on the defensive side. Yeah, I wrote about this already, but if you had told me before the game that hey, Oklahoma State's only scoring 26 points, I might be feel pretty right. good about Kansas State's chances of at least getting more than 26. Probably not much more with the way the offense uh, sputtered tonight, but defensively, Oklahoma State, six scoring drives. I don't know how many possessions total, but they were probably pretty successful on most yeah. of their drives. But holding them to four field goals was the story. I want to ask about one defensive player in particular. Wyatt Hubert missed the Mississippi State game two weeks ago. He was dominant tonight, at least early. He had two sacks, I believe, in the first quarter, including a strip, uh, a strip sack fumble. Uh, what do you think of his play tonight for the Wildcat defensive line? He was kind of played tonight what he was chalked up to be all off season. He was virtually unblockable in yeah. the first quarter and parts of the second quarter. I don't think he was as much of a terror on the edge after the lightning delay, so maybe Oklahoma State went in the locker room and shored some things up. But before that, they just had no answer for him. No doubt about it. Let's flip to offense where K-State obviously struggled tonight, Derek. If you're going to pinpoint one or two things that were the biggest issue tonight, what do you come up with? Establishing an identity. They didn't do that. That's what they've done every game, even though if it's not really prolific, they are. They always showed right off the bat what they wanted to be as an offensive football team, and it's running downhill with power uh, and just committing to it over and over again tonight. And it was probably because they wanted to break tendency and also proved without Malik Knowles that they could do it downfield through the passing game, and they opened up with that, and I think that got away from what they had been doing all year, and I think they just lost who they were, and there was no, no rhythm. And 
really everything works off of their power running game as an offense. It did in North Dakota State. It's going to do in Manhattan. So I think they need to establish that first and go from there. They didn't tonight. They tried to go a different direction, and that just wasn't a winning formula. As Derek said in segment one, there's no semblance of a moral victory here when you lose by two touchdowns when you're the ranked team. But Oklahoma State's a good team. I'm not trying to talk only positive. What did it mean to you that the offense strung together 10 straight points, put together two drives late in this game to at least give K-State a chance and didn't completely fall flat offensively? It, it just showed probably heart more than anything, determination, just, you know, hey, we have the effort and the attitude and probably the culture in our locker room where this thing's going to turn at some point. It did in this game too late, of course, but that means it's going to turn at some point this season, and maybe it happens next week, maybe it happens in three weeks, but it shows the potential that what they are building, there is, you know, a light at the end of the tunnel, even mm -hmm. though they had their struggles tonight, and I think the biggest probably evidence of that, just, just to see how hard James Gilbert ran in the second no half, doubt. I think that was a bright spot. Absolutely. Malik Knowles, let's focus on him again for a second. Chris Kleiman does say in post game that he probably heard it in the Mississippi State game two weeks ago. They knew about this for a decent amount of time before this game. We don't expect him to be back next week against Baylor when K-State faces the Bears in Manhattan. We saw tonight K-State's receiving core really struggle to get open against a great secondary as far as Big 12 football goes. They won't see as good of a secondary next week, but how big of a loss is Malik Knowles and what does he do when you don't have him in this passing game? It's a substantial loss because it's not just the production because obviously I know looking back at the Mississippi State game in Starkville, as a receiver, I don't think he was tremendously productive, but at the same time, it's that attention, yeah, just that yep. presence, because he can also give other guys, you know, great opportunities in man coverage or one-on-one, -on -one, or just not being focused on at all and create openings for them. So it's not necessarily what he can do pr production-wise himself; it's what he creates for the other wide receivers or even the other running backs, because that's one more guy that's probably right. not in the box because you have to account for Malik Knowles. He might just be a redshirt freshman, but I think he's that dangerous of a weapon that he has to be considered. Absolutely. He's a big player in this offense in the return game, in the re reverse game. As a pass catcher, it was a big deal. One last question, Derek, on this edition of the Sunday Show. We'll wrap it up from inside Boone's, Boone Pickens Stadium after that. K-State plays Baylor next week. The Bears did knock off Iowa State today. They're 4-0. They may be a top 25 team next week. What do you think of that opportunity at home for K-State following this loss to the Cowboys? I think Baylor is a top 25 team. I think it I don't think that there's reason to think, hey, Baylor is going to just easily, you know, stop our Kansas State's offense or, right. or just completely take Kansas State out of the game right from the get go like Oklahoma State did. I don't think this is a precursor for what's going to happen next week. There's things to fix, but there's also the element of being back home and another week of knowing, you know, figuring out what to do without a Malik Knowles. So I think there's solutions, there's answers, and I don't think it's all doom and gloom. I don't think it's impossible to right. be Baylor at home all of a sudden. And if I'm you know, being honest, I think Baylor is a winnable game than beating Oklahoma State in Stillwater. I don't think, I think that's an easy thing to say. I do too. I think it's going to be an exciting game next week. I know K-State fans are rightfully upset about this. Uh, if you made the trip down here, I understand that too, of course. But the Wildcats are 3-1. and one. They still have to win at Mississippi State. I think a lot of fans would have taken 3-1 and one right now, if you're being honest with yourself. And it is a winnable game. Baylor's a good opponent, but you have a chance to get to 4-1 and one at home, go into a bye week, see what happens to Malik Knowles and the rest of your help. So there's a lot left in front of the season for K-State, of course. So for Derek Young, for Grant Flanders, who weathered the conditions here tonight at Boone's Pickens, he's doing just fine. I'm Matt Hall for KSN Online. We'd appreciate it if you would tell your friends.